The spatial lag is one of the most powerful applications of spatial weights matrices that we're going to see in this course. It's an operator that allows us to combine the power of geography and spatial context that we can get from a spatial weights matrix with the statistical information provided by measurements collected at particular locations. And it's also a key vehicle to enabling the use of geography in statistics. So let's delve into it with a little bit more of detail, defining what it is exactly, what is the intuition behind it, and how it's used in, in a variety of literature and, and fields. Let's have a look. I will start by defining the spatial lag at a very formal level and with a little bit of math. And I'm doing this because for some people, math clarifies and makes things easier to understand. But I also know that for other people, math does not make things clearer. If you are in this second group, do not worry and maybe even skip forward this slide uh, on the video and just jump straight into what is the intuition of the spatial lag. We can express the spatial lag as the product of a matrix W and a vector Y. And W we know is uh, of dimension n by n, so we have one row for every observation, one column for every observation, then y is a vector that we've just said is, it expresses measurements for every observation. So it's an n by 1. If you remember a little bit of matrix notation, n by n times n by 1 gives you, as a result, well, first it's possible to multiply, and second, as a result, gives you um, another vector of n by 1. So the resulting of this operation, and what we will then call the spatial lag, is another vector, is another set of measurements that's going to give, you, give us some information about the variable y, and this y could be population, could be income, could be deprivation, could be the intensity of some tree species, could be the presence of an animal species, anything that has location attached to it, and the result is going to be, uh, as I was saying, another single vector. So we start with a single set of measurements for, that loca for each location, and the result is going to be a set of measurements. The difference is that for every location, this spatial lag is going to give us contextual information. If you're interested in the math, I'll leave you the individual expression here for your enjoyment and, and perusement, and I'm going to jump onto the intuition. As I was saying, it's a measure that captures the behavior of a variable of y, not at a given location, but at its neighborhood. So what we're having here, and this is very important and what makes the, the spatial lag crucial, is two things. One, it's expressed in a very common and familiar format for statistical methods. It's just a list of measurements, one for every observation that we have in our, in our data set. That could be for every area, for every polygon, for every point. The second one is that the information contained here is not exactly the same as the one we have with the original variable y. It contains information about how that variable y behaves not at a given location, but in this surrounding, in the neighbors. And another very useful thing, which if you remember when we introduced spatial weights matrices, we said sometimes you may want to standardize the weights. This is one of the reasons why. Because if the weights, if W is row standardized, then the spatial lag becomes the average of that variable that, we're, that we've used to create it in the surrounding, in the neighborhood. So it, it's equivalent to taking for every location the values of that variable we're interested in in every neighbor, calculating the average, and that's the value we keep for, the, for that location. And then we move on to the next location. Why is it important now that we know a little bit what it is? Well, it's important because it's a very common way to introduce geography and spatial context into a variety of statistical frameworks. And just to give you a few examples, it's heavily used both 
in something called ESTA, Exploratory Spatial Data Analysis, a family of techniques that we're going to see very soon in the course, but also in more, much more advanced techniques such as spatial regression or even exp exp explicitly spatial machine learning, which we will see a little bit, but there, there's a wide range of, of techniques. And just to give you a flavor, even though we haven't discussed them in the, in the course yet, it's at the very heart of a technique called Moran's Eye, which is a, a statistic that's more than 50 years old um, that allows us to get a sense of clustering of values in a, in a variable. It's also used in something called LISAs, Local Indicators of Spatial Association, another thing we will see in the next block. And moving on, we won't see it in this course, but if you're interested, just know that the spatial lag is a core concept in enabling traditional statistical models and statistical regression in spatially augmenting it and making regression explicitly spatial.